Hello, today is Monday, August 1st, 2022. My name is Daniel Mullaney and behind the camera today is Diego Juarez. And today we'll be viewing a fully a remanufactured Floorware HTC 8030 cassette and box washing system. Uh, this system was fully refurbished by SciTech and we'll be shipping here in the US to our customer's PO number 03367. Okay, so what I'll do is, is I will review the system, sort of discuss the refurbishment that we've done for it, uh, then we'll get the process started. I'll also do some control review, then we'll get the process started. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, at the end of the rent cycles, we're going to go ahead and pause the camera because essentially we'll be viewing it just sitting here drying for about 40 to 50 minutes. So at that time, we'll go ahead and cut the camera and then come back in at the end so we can inspect the product and uh, confirm that everything operated properly. So, um, as I mentioned, I'm going to go ahead and start reviewing the system now then. So, over here I have the, uh, the, the power box already opened up so I can take a look at it right here. Everything in here looks great. All the components have either been tested out or replaced for proper function with the system. The system has been electrically verified for all of its functionality and uh, this is a, uh, just a, a normal standard power box that's been, that's been uh, refurbished as needed by SciTech. So, everything looks good in here. I'm going to go ahead and close it now. And now we are able to provide power to the main system itself. So up here you'll see that the system's booting up. Okay, great. And so everything looks great on here. Uh, we have our SciTech software uploaded onto here. It is the exact same software as the off-the-shelf floorware. Just includes our contact information on the front screen. So if you need to get in touch with us, you can. Uh, we also touched up some of the buttons and icons throughout the uh, process that were a little small or are difficult to press. So we just sort of kind of cleaned up and optimized it, but it's the exact same software as was originally manufactured with the system. Uh, we'll get a little more into that afterwards. So the next item that I want to do here is I'm going to get down and show the underneath uh, chassis part of the system. So under here we have, oh, let's see here. So under here we have several components. Um, first we'll start underneath, which is closed up right now, but in here we have a, a heater coil, a pre-filter, and a HEPA filter. The heater coil was tested out. The entire area was chemically cleaned and, um, and cleaned up from any debris or, or otherwise that we would find in the system. And then the pre-filter and the HEPA filter were both replaced. And then we come to the system itself. We have a wash pump here that was uh, completely rebuilt. We have another forced air heater that was cleaned up and rebuilt. We have filters on all the facility lines to ensure that the uh, any facilities used through the system are filtered so that would be primarily our N2 CDA or DI um, and then we have a variety of switches in here for exhaust pressure flow um, and all the other uh, really kind of standard standard um, facilities that you would want to verify and check throughout the process run so this was all completely designed by the OEM and we uh, rebuild it to the, the uh, original manufacturer's condition and test out all the parts to ensure that the original process can be run properly. Okay, so everything looks great under here. Okay, I'm just going to lock up. Okay. So next we'll go ahead and take a look at the process chamber. So here we have our process chamber. In this uh, circumstance, we'll be running four inch cassettes and four inch boxes. For the cassettes, we only have a you know, limited number of these Teflon cassettes on site here at SciTech, but we loaded up several of them into here so you can see how the rack works. Uh, it's as simple as really sliding the back end on and then letting the cassette fall into position right here. As you can see, it's pretty sturdy on here now. So these are a stainless steel racks that have been electro polished. They have Teflon uh, guide rails on the side that allow it to slide on smoothly. And um, we have a variety of these rack designs available for not just four inch, but all kinds of products and substrate and cassette sizes. On this side, we have the sort of um, counterpart to the cassettes, which would be the four inch boxes. 
For the boxes, we do have more of them available here on site, so we have the rack fully loaded. Um, since boxes are, are lighter and the wash pump is pretty, uh, pretty strong on the way it, it, it uh, washes, we have this, this sort of securement bracket right here that, that is pretty straightforward. With the bottom layer, after you install or load up the boxes, you just slide that, that um, piece over here like this, and then this bracket will, there we go, this bracket will hold these cassettes in position, or sorry, these boxes in position during the process run, so that way they're, back, they're still on the rack in the same um, spot as they were when you started the process. So this one's uh, another pretty straightforward rack for us. Now, inside the process chamber, this was all chemically cleaned out and uh, is back to similar to like new condition. Uh, these tubes were cleaned out or replaced, all gaskets and um, uh, through hole. Um, um, essentially, the, uh, the gaskets that, that protect the through hole for the, for the tubing, those were all replaced. And so that's a call standard work for us there. Then inside the chamber, we have new um, spray hubs and spray hub overlay discs. These are a pretty standard consumable on the system because over time they will wear from the Teflon ball bearings in there. So that's a spare part that we offer and those are all replaced as standard for part of our rebuild here. So as you can see inside the chamber looks great. All right. Okay. So you always want to press the system nice and firm like that when you close it. Sometimes it's easy to kind of half push it up and it won't actually seal all the way. Um, Another part associated with that that's replaced here actually is this door seal. So there's a whole door seal kit that we offer as a spare part. That's automatically replaced when you purchase the system from us as well. And that's kind of related to this uh, firm push here to make sure it seals all the way properly. All right, so now we're going to come into the, the software here. So tap the main menu to enter it. So in here, you're going to have multiple recipes that you can run. Recipe one, two, or three. We find that most customers only run one recipe, as this is sort of just a, a semiconductor sized industrial dishwasher. It also offers a dry only recipe. You can go into the recipe settings here and program them. So as you can see, you can, you can decide the different recipe that you want to go between and then change any of the settings on here by entering in the change settings item. Uh, we already have it programmed here at 55 degrees Celsius with uh, 75 second washes and a 50 minute dry. Okay, the next item that we have is the system menu here. And so in the system menu, you can go into manual mode, which I'll show you right now. Password is all zeros, four zeros. And in manual mode, you can individually actuate any of the items on the system in order to check its health or do any kind of troubleshooting that you'll need to do. As you can see, I just kind of jumped through the variety of them. You have the motion zones, the air knife zones, actuating the air knives and that sort of thing. So I'm going to come back and just for example, give you uh, run one of them here. So let's see here. We have the door lock. Boom. Then the door just locked. Okay. So that's one example right there. Okay. Not released. Then we have filter status to see the status of the filters um, and when they were last replaced. So this will give you an indication of when you need to do it uh, next. As you can see, we have like 16, 12, and 12 um, with these filters because they were just recently installed and so you'll ha you won't have to change any of these for another thousand hours or so on the variety of filters that you have there. All right, and then we have password options for changing out the, change out the password if you like. And then system controls. The system control is a longer password that's found in the manual and that's for uh, more custom features of the system. Typically, you should not have to go into any of the system control features. It should be fine to run the way, to run just the way it is. All right, so then lastly, you have standby settings. So standby settings are what you're gonna allow to do while the system's sitting in idle. It's really showing what's our high alarm, what's our standby set point on the DI water, how long should the DI water be running or be heated while in idle. Those items can be selected here. And um, I'm just giving you sort of a brief overview here because all this information can also be found in the manual. And if you have questions, we suggest taking a look there or just giving us a call and we'd be happy to discuss with you in uh, more detail. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go ahead and just run recipe number one. Initiate process recipe one, okay. Okay, great, so I just heard the door lock completely locked right here. And as you can see, I can't push it in any further. 
It's because I gave it a nice firm push in the beginning and I got to emphasize that's important for this. So in our first step here, we have a four second surfactant pump purge into the rear uh, reservoir chamber. So what that's doing is essentially spiking the rear reservoir with surfactant so that way when the uh, wash process starts that you have a mixture of the surfactant and the DI water for that first step. Okay, so we have a 120 second safety fill timer here. So what that means is that if the back reservoir, which I can see now is filling up, hasn't filled within that time period, then an alarm will, will occur to let you know that you don't have DI water flow to the system. Okay, so now here we have the system starting the first uh, wash step because this is spiked with surfactant and it's gonna run for 75 seconds here. So really what we're doing now is we're taking that, that uh, surfactant and DI water solution and we are cleaning out the entire chamber, all the cassettes and all the boxes. It, see, it sees, seems to look like it's washing a little bit different. That's just because we have more product on this side. So the, the DI water itself is actually hitting the product more um, continuously versus this side where we only have a few cassettes. It's kind of washing vigorously all over the chamber. So that's, that's pretty normal right there. And it's what you should expect if you have different loads or different racks on both sides of the system. Okay. So we've got 20 more seconds left up here. It says, uh, you can see right here that you have a water temp set point. So the set point was 55 degrees Celsius. That's where it was sitting in idle. Um, however, we, it has now dropped 10 degrees to 46 degrees Celsius. And so that's because we're now taking the, the DI water, we filled the reservoir, and now we're backfilling from some of our house DI. So seeing that drop in, in water temperature is expected when you're running the system, okay? So now the first item is done, the first step is done right now. We are draining out the remaining DI water and we're misting the chamber. Really the, the, job, the idea for the system right now is to drain out that solution and mist the chamber so we can ensure that as much of that, that uh, surfactant that's still in the process chamber is, is uh, getting rinsed out as we can in between runs. Okay, so here we're now on to the uh, second process run right here and everything's looking good on this one as well. So now we have another uh, fill right here. Okay, while that's happening, I'll, I'll just take a look, walk around myself to the back of the system here. So on the back of the system, I can see everything looks great. We have new bimba cylinders for the air knife uh, rotating. We have new um, chains on there as well that essentially create the rotary mechanism for those air knives to go back and forth. I see we have the surfactant pump. We have the surfactant um, reservoir over here. And then we have a, a, a plenum on the back of the system. So for the 8030 system, you actually don't need to hook it up to, a, to exhausting your fab that's actually pulling exhaust. You really just want to pipe it up to anything that's going to be either exhaust neutral or you could really let it, depending on where you are, you can actually let it just dry out into the room. Uh, really, the system has its own built-on blower that allows for the hot air to exhaust out while also at the same time recirculating through the system. The idea is that it'll recirculate through the, the system while also exhausting out in order to uh, cause the best drying effect for the products. Okay, we've got 10 more seconds of the second uh, rent step. Okay, yep, everything looks good right there. So now we are draining and misting again. So uh, draining out the excess DI water and then misting across the substrates to ensure as much of that surfactant as we can is washed out of the system. Okay, so now we are on to the third sequence, which is um, you know similar to the first two, but no surfactant included. We're essentially going from washing at first to now rinsing. So just like the last ones, because we have the same sort of fill process, this will likely get down to about 70 seconds before we have that uh, wash process happen again. Okay, so um, 
Since we're just sort of following the same process, I'll take a second to talk about some of the other services that we offer for this box washer. So where this system was sold from our inventory, we also offer refurbishment services for your box washers. So oftentimes this, this is a tool that gets a little bit neglected in terms of its, its um, upkeep and its PM schedules. So if you have a system that has damage on the doors, cracked windows, leaking issues, um, maybe the wash pump needs a rebuild, a whole variety of, of issues sort of like that, SiteTech can offer a full rebuild process for your box washer. You send it to us, it does take a few months because it's a pretty large tool that we have to go through entirely and swap out many different components just like I talked about here. But what we can do is we can provide a full refurbishment and a six month warranty. We'll send it back to you in like new condition and it'll be ready for years of processing. It's a, it's a great service and it's something that I encourage you to give us a call about if you have any type of box washer that you'd like to get service like that. All right, we got 15 more seconds here. Okay, so now we're draining out again. We have another uh, missed timer here for 15 seconds. All right, now here we go, moving into uh, sequence number four. So in that case, we're just uh, starting back up with the wash cycle and we've, it's uh, going to be running for 75 seconds here. All right, so in addition to providing refurbishment services for this system, SciTech also has 100% of the parts and service that you need to keep your system up and running in the field. Whether it's some of the consumables that I mentioned, such as the spray arms, the spray hubs, solenoid valves, the HEPA filter, pre-filter valves, uh, the air knife filters, uh, bimba cylinders, the uh, spray, uh, air knife rotating chains, all of those spare parts we have available for you. So if you need to perform any sort of work on your system in the field, please give us a call. We'd be happy to send you a quote over for those items and give you unlimited tech support for you to perform that installation on your own in the field. All right, so we got five more seconds left on our what should be our last um, rent step here. All right. Okay, so now we're, as I mentioned, going into the dry sequence. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have a set point of dry temp right here. Currently our process value is 37 degrees C because the air that's coming into the chamber needs to get hot as we go. The air heater is on as you can see right here, so that's great. Um, then right now we have the, well the blower and the ionizer on as well. The uh, air heater is only red because it's a heater, so they have that extra indicator. And now we're changing between our different air knife zones. So essentially we're jumping between them so they can rotate back and forth. First on this side, then on this side, then on the top, then on this side. And what they're doing is they're, gonna, they're just gonna be blowing um, excess water off of the cassette and substrates. So as the system's heating up, it's also having uh, the uh, water physically blown off of it to, um, to, to improve the dry time to the shortest as possible. As you can see here, the, um, the process value is slowly rising. So the system is heating up as expected. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we now have 48 more minutes of watching quote unquote paint dry. So in this case, we'd be watching our cassette and substrates uh, sorry, our cassette and boxes just sit here and dry. But um, since we're not going to have an hour plus long video, we're going to go ahead and pause it right now. We'll come back online when we have a couple minutes remaining and we will inspect the product at the end to confirm everything worked properly. We'll see you soon. And we're back. So we have just had a successful completion of the 
um, drying process for the box washer, well, the wash and dry process. So our next step here is going to be acknowledging the finish. So now the door seal has released, as you can just hear right there. So I'll open up the chamber right here, and I can feel the, uh, the heat coming out of it. So um, there's an automatic two minute timer that has to delay before the end of any run, but uh, you'll still feel that right there. So, um, you know, it's kind of clear when you've had a, a process run go by. So I'll go ahead and slide these cassettes out. Okay, now the cassettes are washed, dry, and they're warm to the touch. Okay. I'll grab this one from the back as well. There we go. Cassette is also dry, warm to the touch. Okay, great. I'll just go ahead and load this back on up here. All right, now I'm gonna slide over to the boxes. Okay, over to the boxes. Again, warm to the touch, dry throughout. Okay, I'll take out this sort of locking bracket that I have here. I'll grab another one of these boxes from the back. Okay, great. Again, washed warmed or dried and warmed to the touch there. Okay, so here we had a successful run of the, uh, of the box washer. Just getting this bottom one back mounted on here. All right, so when you are uh, running your box washer, you'll want to make um, adjustments to the recipe as you need in order to get the proper washing and drying results. A good example would be we had a four second surfactant spike on this run. You might want to spike for two seconds, six seconds, kind of depends on your surfactant viscosity and how much is recommended by your manufacturer. Um, we also had a 50 minute dry on this system. However, your dry time will depend on whether or not you're using CDA versus nitrogen, as well as what your facility pressures are. The higher the pressure tends to lead to faster dry times, whereas lower pressure uh, generally results in a bit longer dry times. And so the manual does have specifications for how to run these systems. However, um, if you're off by a little bit, that could just impact the way your recipe is in total designed. And so just uh, pay attention to that while you're doing your uh, sort of uh, engineering during startup. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view our inspection for today. Again, my name is Daniel, and this is filmed for SciTech Process Solutions. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our products, you can browse the rest of our YouTube channel or visit our website at www.scitechprocess.com or just give us a call at 916-797-9000 and to reach me directly, dial extension 2201. Thanks again, and hope you have a great day.